Zoe app, a personalized nutrition service that claims to help you reach a healthy weight, feel less bloated and avoid chronic health issues. It's endorsed by celebrities and all over TikTok, but does it truly live up to the hype or is it just a waste of your money? Keep watching until the end to find out are my thoughts on it as a registered nutritionist. So what's the deal with the Zoe app? Well, it's kind of like a dating app, a matchmaker for you and your food. The Zoe app offers personal nutrition recommendations based on an at-home test results and scientific research. Here's one of the founders of the app, Tim Spector, explaining it. Louis' personalized nutrition program starts with an at-home test of your blood sugar, your blood fat, and your gut microbiome. The insights from that test are provided to you in a comprehensive report, giving you information about your body's responses and advice to eat the right food for your unique biology. The app dishes out scores for various foods and ingredients to help you make informed choices. The program also champions the power of plant diversity and aims to educate users on building healthier meals. Now, Zoe has based much of its existence on a series of research studies called the PREDICT studies, which are ongoing. The studies are being led by Tim Spector, a doctor and professor of genetic epidemiology at King's College London. You might remember me mentioning him in my video all about ultra-processed foods. Link in the description below. But not everyone is on board. Some critics have raised eyebrows about the app, more on this later on. The personalized student space is big business. The Zoe app has raised almost $30 million and one CEO has valued it at $250 million. It also has high profile investors such as Stephen Bartlett. But what is the cost for you? The cost of the Zoe app and products varies based on the specific plan and duration. The prices start at $73 for a single month and go down to $30 per month for a year long plan. But wait, there's more. The Zoe test kit costs $294 or six payments of $49, plus the cost of membership. Why does it cost so much? Well, Federico Clamati, a medical scientist, a nutritionist, and a science communication strategist at Zoe says, the product at the moment is the price it is because the testing we do is expensive. So what do you actually get for your money? Well, you get a test kit that measures three things, your gut bacteria, your blood sugar, and your blood fats. The gut health test involves providing a stool sample to analyze the composition of the gut microbiome. Yes, you heard that right. You need to send them your poop catch the poop in there so you don't have to go groveling around. You're also given a blood sugar sensor, a continuous glucose monitor, CGM, to track blood sugar levels in response to different foods. That's the Zoe yellow round thing that you may have seen on people's arms. And then there's the blood fat test, which assesses an individual's response to dietary fats. Based on your test results, you're given a dietary inflammation profile. Your blood sugar control scores shows how well your body processes certain carbohydrates. If you experience large blood sugar spikes after certain foods, this may increase risk for inflammation. Zoe hypothesizes that understanding which foods causes these spikes and the limiting those foods may help with satiety and energy levels, as well as the risk for diabetes and heart disease. Your blood fat control scores shows how well your body processes fatty foods. The lower the score, the higher risk for inflammation. But how accurate are these tests? Now, this has been a hot topic. Some users find the test to be insightful and trustworthy, but there are concerns raised by critics about the reliability of the app's glucose measurements, potentially leading to health anxiety and overdiagnosing. And this is what doctors have told us as well, where people are looking at their Libre, these are the graphs that come up on their phone and go, oh, my glucose is too high. And they've been going to see their GP thinking that they've got diabetes. So you've actually spoken to GPs who are reporting this. Yeah. People coming into their surgeries really anxious about their glucose because they've been wearing the Zoe app. And it turns out they're totally healthy, but they've just been worried for no reason. Some doctors have also shared their concerns. Dr. Shivana Misra, who is a consultant in metabolic medicine at Imperial College London. And she says, we have no robust evidence base to suggest that those rises and falls are signaling anything untoward in the present or that they have negative consequences in the future. Furthermore, there's a risk that everything becomes glucose related. It's human nature when you're monitoring something, you become hypervigilant about that. Zoe nutrition scores are predicted on the idea that each of us responds to the same food in a slightly different way due to our microbiomes. But what is our microbiome? Well, the microbiome is a diverse community of microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, residing in and on our bodies. It plays a vital role in digestion, vitamin synthesis, and immune system function. 
Translating the Zoe Nutrition Scores into Dietary Advice is trickier and less well understood. A personalised diet might tell someone to cut out white white bread and eat more leafy vegetables. But do you need an expensive microbiome testing to tell you that? We also need to consider the fact the foods Zoe predicts will be best for you are based on AI. Now, while the use of AI is interesting, we don't really know how relevant the associations are between data and you as an individual. But there are studies out there that show that it may be promising. One study from Israel in 2015 compared personalised diets generated by a machine learning algorithm with diets selected by a clinical dietitian. The authors found that people in both groups had fewer glucose spikes after meals, indicating a healthier diet. This suggests that personalised diets generated by AI were comparable to the diets recommended by a human clinical dietitian. Now let's explore the pros and cons of the Zoe app. First, let's look at the pros. Zoe emphasises on plant diversity and building healthier meals. If that causes a positive change in habits, then that gets a thumbs up from me. It also provides coaching. You are given access to Zoe coaches who have at least a bachelor's degree or higher in nutrition science. They will work with you inside the app to make sure you're getting the most out of your experience. But there are definitely some flip sides to consider. Let's look at the cons. Firstly, the test days. They can be cumbersome and repetitive. The test day today and on the app, I've got a list of all the little things I need to do. Secondly is the concerns about reliability. The research continues to be limited in terms of how accurate and meaningful Zoe is to the state of our microbiome over time. And is it really good for the state of mind to track everything you eat and turn food into numbers? Does it breed paranoia? Okay, even if the information provided by Zoe has some validity, doesn't it just suck the enjoyment out of food? Is Zoe an example of food turning into medicine? Where a diet is no longer about how it tastes, its nutritional value, or as a means of gaining or losing weight, but as a form of preventative treatment. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for eating well to try and reduce the risk of certain illnesses, but is this way of thinking about food breeding paranoia? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And let's not forget the cost of it. It's not easily accessible to everyone. If nutrition is really important to gut health, then it needs to become something that everyone can have access to, which at the moment Zoe isn't. The people who can't afford it are probably the people who need it the most. So should you try Zoe? Overall, I would suggest saving your money. You can improve your gut microbiome without having it tested. We should just eat and not feel the need to turn food into numbers. You're better off trying to have a balanced and varied diet. What does that actually look like? Well, it includes a variety of whole, unprocessed foods like fruits, veggies, whole grains, lean protein, and healthy fats. And the key to a balanced diet is moderation, portion control, and cutting back on added sugars and unhealthy fats. This type of eating pattern not only leads to weight loss, but it also improves our overall health, reduces the risk of chronic diseases, and promotes sustainable weight management. That's a win-win. One of the best diets to follow is the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is not some fad diet that's restrictive and not sustainable. It's about enjoying food. And there's lots of research out there to back this up. Studies have shown that the Mediterranean diet is one of the best ways of eating out there. It helps with weight control and reducing the likelihood of certain lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, diabetes and depression. If you want to know more about the Mediterranean diet then check out my video all about it. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you found this video helpful then hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Catch you on the next one.